Good day to you. This is David Pye of Pye Metallurgical International Consulting and we're bringing to you today hints for heat treaters and vacuum furnace leak detection for HT courses of Mumbai in India. This first presentation will be the first of a number of short presentations to you. The heat treater and the metallurgist in a program of vacuum furnace maintenance and in this instance a few presentations on the subject of leak detection of the low pressure furnace. To understand the nature of vacuum as a tool for thermally processing steel is for many reasons such as heat treatment, brazing, solutionizing, sintering and so on one needs to understand what is vacuum. The choice of words of vacuum is in reality an oxymoron word. The statement I'm about to make may well surprise you and it's this, that there is no such thing as a vacuum. Even in deepest space total and complete vacuum does not exist. There's always, always a pressure in even deeper space at a value which is below what we, can, we define as normal atmospheric temperature and pressure at sea level. In reality what we have in a vacuum furnace is a furnace which operates at a low pressure a low pressure level dependent on of course the pumping system. When operating a low pressure furnace we need to maintain that pressure for many reasons be it the removal of contaminated gases, elemental volatilization which simply means outgassing, we need the pressure within the process chamber to be stable. If it's not stable it means we have a leak. So the question now is asked, what is a leak? There are two types of leaks that can occur on a low pressure furnace which are a real leak and an apparent leak. What then is a real leak? A real leak means that there is a hole in the furnace or in its supportive construction such as pipework, valves, gas delivery systems etc. What then is an apparent leak? An apparent leak means that we think there is a hole in the furnace and there are many holes in a, in a, in a vacuum furnace such as the main furnace door or alternate doors, thermocouple holes, power feed-throughs etc etc but there's no leak from those holes so what in reality is, is happening? Is there something within the process chamber that is either outgassing or volatilizing? So now we must test the furnace to determine what sort of a leak we have, real or apparent. This is where we begin to look for the needle in the haystack. There are a sequence of operations that we must go through in order to firstly identify what type of leak we have and secondly to find that location of that leak. It's necessary to ensure that the furnace is cold, clean and empty. And this is accomplished simply uh, by ensuring that there is no load inside the process chamber and that the furnace doors are closed and appropriately sealed. Now the furnace is pumped down to its normal vacuum operational level followed by heating up to its highest operating temperature or by about 30 degrees above its, not, its highest operating temperature. Once it's accomplished its maximum operating temperature the furnace pressure and time is noted at that point and the furnace then allowed to cool down 
and we note both time and pressure. Now we're ready to test what that rate of rise will be. When we start the test, we start the test for the leak up rate by using a simple spray bottle filled with denatured alcohol or acetone. Note the pressure in the process chamber and spray the alcohol around the furnace door or doors, then the power feed through holes and then the thermocouple holes, etc. If there is a leak, you will see an immediate pressure rise occurring from the point at which you have sprayed the alcohol or acetone and this will in uh, indicate to you that you have a major leak. The principle behind this simple test is, is that because of the process chamber is at a lower pressure level than atmospheric pressure, the alcohol will be sucked into the process chamber and immediately evaporate into a gas. You'll then see the pressure rise on the vacuum instrumentation panel. The denatured alcohol test or acetone spray test will usually indicate a major leak and it could be usually found on the door, main door o-ring seal. The general cause of that leak of the main door can be caused as a result of one of two potential problems. The first problem could well be that the door clamping system is clamped too much and initially places too much pressure on the o-ring seal thus causing a flattening or partial cutting of the o-ring. Remember that the partial pressure of the furnace pulling the door onto the o-ring seal to the point where you, you can pull that door open. You cannot pull it open. The second problem uh, would be, could be that there's too much vacuum o-ring grease that has been applied to the o-ring seal for lubrication and that the excess grease being squeezed out from behind the o-ring and into the low pressure side which is the vacuum chamber and is evaporating within the process chamber. Our next hints for heat treaters on the subject of vacuum furnace leak detection will discuss helium leak detection methods using a residual gas analyzer and helium gas. We trust that you found this short presentation of hot hints for heat treaters and we hope that it will be a useful uh, tool to both yourself and to your company. We thank you for taking the time and making the time to view this short presentation. And we value your comments to us greatly. Yours most sincerely, David.